Teenagers, welcome to Life Night. I know this is very different than our normal Life Teen setup. I am here at the church coming to you to bring you this Life Night. And it's not just me. Today we are being able to plug in to Life Teen's national, global, wide Life Night series called Anchored. They're doing a Life Night series for the next four weeks based on the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. And so we're able to plug in to our church here, our youth group, and plug in to Life Teen International's um, Life Night series called Anchored. And we get to have a time where we get to spend uh, Life Nights, our Sunday evenings, with national speakers and musicians uh, bringing the gospel to you in this time of this pandemic and this time. So I hope you're doing well. Um, and so we'd like to put together a video for you and for me to say 33 ways to keep social distancing. Check it out. I hope now you know a little bit more about how you can keep social distance. It is interesting that this whole pandemic and social distancing is changing how we live our lives um, from anything of what we have at our house. Like, did you run out of toilet paper? Like, I didn't, I have enough. I just have enough, don't worry about it. But like, did you run out? Like, are there things that you went to the grocery store that you're not able to have? Like, is your life changed? You know, like, you know, school and with family and people having to work and being at home with your siblings all day and just driving you crazy. Like, what is your situation like at home? It's definitely changed our life and how we operate at the church. We're not able to have mass. We're not able to have life team. We're not able to have edge. We're not able to gather together in community. And so it has definitely changed the way that we live. How is it changing you? I want you to ponder, like, how is my life changing? I know there's been times that I pay attention to the media and I see all the, the information coming to me and it begins to change how I feel. I take on this idea of despair where I maybe lose hope or I get distracted and I think, well, what are the symptoms of COVID-19? Do I have a fever? Am I breathing hard? Am I coughing? Is that cough? Like, it changes the way we see things. And if we allow ourselves to consume too much of this stuff, too much of this interaction of the internet and, and the social media and the regular media of all these things coming into our lives, it begins to change how we look at life. And it begins to change uh, our perception to more of a, an attitude of despair where we don't have any hope. But tonight, we're going to dive into the theological virtue of hope, the hope in Jesus Christ that we have to be able to have a life. And nothing of this world can take it away. And so to lead us into that night, into this first Life Night series anchored into the theological virtue of hope, 
we're gonna have Emily Wilson be able to speak to us on that. Now, if you know Emily, she's a famous YouTuber, she is a, a national speaker and musician, uh, she's a wonderful person and a friend of Life Team, and so she's coming here tonight to bring you a message on hope. Hey everyone, Emily Wilson here. I'm so glad you've decided to join us for this virtual Life Night from all over the world. That's the beauty here at Life Teen is that Catholics can gather from all over the world around our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the hope he has to offer us. And that's what I want to talk about tonight is the virtue of hope. The three theological virtues of faith, hope, and love guide our lives as Christians. They guide our lives as Catholics. They are a very important piece of our lives. And as you and I both know, hope is something that is very important to maintain and reflect on in what our world is going through today. To hope, right? To hope is to want something to happen or be true. I say, I hope you win the game. Oh, I hope it doesn't rain today. Oh, I hope she gets here on time. That's kind of the standard definition of hope. But when we look at hope, the kind of more robust hope that we have as Catholics, we take that up a notch and it's this expectation or of this desire that is to be fulfilled. That we have this hope as Catholics in Jesus Christ that is so so much more than I hope it doesn't rain today. I hope the game doesn't get canceled. It is a hope in a person. It is a hope in a reality. And I want to expand on that a little bit tonight. A lot of people see hope as this light at the end of the tunnel kind of situation. And that's the way I saw hope for a long time, is that you're in this dark tunnel in life. Maybe, maybe it's a season, maybe it's the season you're in right now, that there's this darkness and the hope that I have in my life is this light at the end of the tunnel that I see, oh my gosh, there's light there, there's hope. It's not a hopeless situation. And yet, as Catholics, we know that our life isn't this light at the end of the tunnel situation. Why? Because Jesus, the light of the world, right? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the light of the world is with us always. Through the Holy Spirit given to us at Pentecost, through the Eucharist, which we may as lay people not be participating in the Eucharist, but there are still masses by priests being said all over the world that the light of the world, Jesus, Emmanuel, is God with us. That as Catholics, we have access, we are in relationship with the person of Jesus Christ, who isn't this light at the end of the tunnel, but who is the light of our lives and the light that is here with us always, here to give us hope, here to be our hope. And I think in these times, as we look at the virtue of hope, it's very important to look at the opposite of hope, which is despair. And many people, you might be yourself, are falling into despair. Despair is to say, there's no hope. This situation is hopeless. I have no hope left. And my favorite person who we see in scripture, who showed us what it means to live the very opposite of despair, was the hemorrhaging woman. We find the hemorrhaging woman in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 5 verse 25 it says now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years she had endured much under many physicians and had spent all she had and she was no better but rather grew worse she had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak for she said if I but touch his clothes I will be made well immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all round to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. This woman is in a situation in deep suffering for 12 years. It says she has spent all she had in this woman. When we look at her, her story, she had every reason to say, there's no hope, to throw up her hands and say, it's hopeless. I've run out of every option there is. And yet, how do we know that she did not give in to despair, even in such great darkness, even in such great suffering? She went out because she heard that Jesus was in her town. 
If she had fallen into despair, if she had given into that, which is so easy to give into in dark times, to say there's no hope, if she had given into that, she would have stayed home. She would have stayed home. She would have said, there's no hope. He can't help me. There's nothing he can do for me. And instead she left her house because she had hope still alive in her heart, that desire for this expectation, this, this desire to be fulfilled. And she goes and what does she do? She does something that is so important for us to do in these times as we hold on to hope. She reaches out to Jesus Christ himself. She grabs his garment with all the hope in the world, all of this hope in in who Jesus is and could be for her, and she is healed. She shows us exactly what we should do in these times, which is even though it might be uncomfortable, even though it might be not the first thing that we want to do is in that struggle and that suffering is to go toward Jesus Christ. She shows us that in our hope, we must do just that to reach out to Jesus Christ himself in prayer, in our homes these days to say, Jesus, we need you. Jesus, you are our hope. Because the reality is that a lot of us, a lot of people in the world put our hope in a lot of different places, whether that's in politics, whether that's in a person, whether that's in a relationship, whatever that might be, we put our hope in a lot of different places. But as Catholics, we are called and invited to root our hope in Jesus Christ himself, who is God with us. To have hope now, to have our hope rooted in Jesus is not, is to go beyond saying everything will be okay. It is to say the beauty of life is that I know that this life is not the end, right? That the, the, the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus conquering sin and death gave us the opportunity to be with Christ, with Jesus Christ, God himself, the Holy Spirit for all of eternity in eternal life. And that is the hope that we hold on to, to say this life is wonderful, is messy, is beautiful, is good, is fun, is all of these different things, is challenging. There's a million descriptors that we can use to describe this life. But as Catholics, we know and believe that this isn't it and that our hope lies in the promise of Jesus Christ, the promise that he made, that there is life beyond our life here on earth, that the saints who have gone before us, who have passed away and entered into eternal life, into heaven with our Lord, they had their hope fulfilled because their hope was in that promise of life eternal with Jesus and that same hope, that same promise promise is given to every single one of us to know that this is not the end, that this is not it, that our broken, troubled world is not the end of the story, that we, when we pass away, which we all will, will die and we will get to see the face of Jesus Christ, who hopefully when we stand before there on our on the day of our death, will say, well done, my good and faithful servant, because we live lived our lives with faith and hope and love, trusting in the promises of Jesus Christ, walking in his ways, following all of his commandments, showing him that we want to be with him for all of eternity. We hope to be with him for all of eternity. Hope is a great gift as a Catholic these days, and I want to give you Romans chapter 12, verse 12, as you go forth from this life night. It says, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering and persevere in prayer. To rejoice in hope, that hope that says Jesus is God with us here now, but also promises that this life is not the end. To be patient in suffering, to say beauty can come from this suffering. That God is always moving and working even in suffering and to persevere in prayer. To say in all of this, I will reach out to Jesus Christ, my Savior, God with us because he is and always will be Jesus Christ, our hope. Thanks for joining us tonight. Let's end with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus Christ, you are our living hope. You are God with us, Emmanuel. Thank you for the gift that it is to be loved by you. Thank you for giving us the gifts of faith and hope and love. Help us to be people of hope, to look at this example of the hemorrhaging woman who did not despair, but who reached out in hope 
to grab your garment. Give each of us the courage to do just that in these days when we want to say there is no hope. Give us the courage to remember her example and to reach out to you in love and confidence of who you are and the hope that you have always, always offered us. Jesus, we trust in you. Help us to love you more. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with us on this night. May God bless you all. Wow. That really puts some things in perspective. Like, how have I lost hope? It makes me ponder some things. Like, what am I hoping for? So, maybe some questions you could ask yourself or talk amongst your family. or What are some things you're hoping for? Are you hoping that this whole thing goes away? Are you hoping that you're able to get back to school? Are you hoping to be able to see your friends again? Are you have the basic hope to come back to Mass? What are the things that you're hoping for right now in this moment? And then take it a step deeper. And think, how are we reaching out to Jesus in this time of despair? Think about the hemorrhaging woman and how she reached out to the Lord. And she had hope in Jesus. Are we placing our same hope in that? Can you find your hope in Jesus? And are we taking this opportunity and this time to grow to reach out to him? I think this is an opportunity for us all to invite the Lord into our lives right now and in this moment. So we're going to pray here in a minute. And we're going to we're going to pray and we're going to worship with our friend of life team, Ike Ndolo, who's going to lead us through a time of worship. I think we just invite the Lord into our lives in this moment to put aside our despair and bring in our hope, to allow the Holy Spirit to come and fill us now in this place. So as we're about to pray, about to sing, about to worship, about to enter into this time, just invite the Holy Spirit to come, to root out any fear, anything that might lead you to despair and invite the hope of the Lord into your life. Come Lord, come Lord, come Holy Spirit. Hello everyone, um, Ike and Dola here. Let's, uh, let's sing and pray together. Come to the feast i 
heart of God From the unrelenting heart of God We're all dry bones, longing for a savior, waiting for the God of life to put us back together. We're all dry bones, longing for a savior, waiting for the God of Put us back together. We're all tribals, longing for a savior, waiting for the God of life and the memory of who I was fades away in the arms of. Amen to that. Let's say a prayer uh, to close that time of the glory be. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. First Peter says that you should always be ready to give a reason for your hope. So the world should be able to see you and me as a, not a person of despair, but as a person of hope. And we should be willing to give and ready to give our reasoning for that. Jesus Christ who came who did it from heaven to earth to die for the sins of man and to give you a life right now and in this moment. So let's just live as a people of hope. Be ready to give a, a reasoning for that hope. just want to encourage you to do that. <clears throat> to be anchored. To be anchored in God's hope. Let's continue to be connected as a body of Christ. Let's connect to our peer group, our life team group, obviously with some social distancing, but to connect with, make sure people are okay. Check in with your friends. Check in with your life team community. Make sure that you know and help your parents and, and everybody that you're around to plug into what we have going on here at the parish. We have mass streamed every day. You can go to our parish website or our Facebook and, uh, and watch Mass live. On Tuesday night, we have an awesome worship time and at Eucharistic Adoration at 7 o'clock. And on Sundays at 7, we're going to continue to do Stations of the Cross. And we're going to continue to do Life Nights here. So keep plugging in. We're going to try. If you have uh, maybe some tips on how we can serve you better, prayer requests, drop them in the comments. We'd love to pray with you and for you. And uh, live this week in hope, not of despair. Blessings, guys.